Oh no, we gotta show the up. Y'all, I found this cute. Oh my god, is my mic on? I found this cute. It's still not low enough. Okay, first, let's get into this towel wrap. I just found this at Bed Bath & Beyond in store. It was 50% off. I went online and it's not 50% off online, but I will drop the link if you guys wanna check to see if you can find it in store. It's so freaking cute and it's like adjustable, which I like because most towel wraps are too big for me. So anyway, I think y'all didn't come here for any of that. Working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep end like usual. I swear they passed us, they doing too much. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since we've done like a regular talking video. I know my last video was sponsored, even though it was like a week in my life. And then, yeah, I haven't really done much talking. But um, I have a lot to tell you guys. I have a lot to catch you guys up on. I know I haven't really been active on YouTube and I apologize for that. I just been kind of like trying to make sure that I was in the right place to do it. Cause I always say like, I like to come on YouTube and like talk my talk, but like, have already processed it and thought about it and like not rushing to create something just because I haven't posted in a while, you know? So if you haven't already noticed, I am in a new bathroom. I am in a new location. And I know that most of my Instagram followers are coming here to get that tea, so I'm just gonna spill it first. I have moved to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and I've actually been wanting to move here for a few years. Um, but we'll talk about reasons why I stayed in Florida as long as I did and like, why this move was also kind of sudden. Y'all know I just had moved into like my dream apartment in South Florida. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. <laughs> but of course we have to come back with some skincare. I, my skin y'all, she's been, okay. Like glowing, like giving, okay. And I do think it's in part because of the products, but it's also just because I, I feel like I've been taking more care of myself these past few months than I have ever in my whole life. Like, I really hope that I'm in frame because I am like upside down on the viewfinder. So let's cleanse. I'm gonna use the Dermalogica Daily Glycolic Cleanser. This has been one of my go-to cleansers for a little while now. I think I've used this in a previous video. Good for AM and PM. And cause it's a glycolic acid cleanser, you're getting some light exfoliation with it too. I'm gonna turn it on a little bit more. Wait, do I like this angle better? <laughs> I'm gonna be playing around with camera angles a lot. This is the camera facing the mirror. Actually, this might be the view. <laughs> Can y'all tell it's my first time filming here? <laughs> All right, so first, obviously there's like been some major life changes that I've been through this year that I honestly, um, if you would've asked me if I thought I'd be living in Atlanta in September of this year, in January of this year, I would have been like, what? <laughs> like, this is not what was in the plan. Um, and I think that's another reason why it's throwing a lot of people off because, well, people that are close to me know that I've wanted to move here for a while. So it's kind of like, duh, for them. But for you guys who only follow me on social media, I feel like it was a very sudden thing. And there is a lot of pressure as an influencer, whatever the heck you want to call it, to like always have something to post and to like keep people up to date with what you're doing all the time. And this year I've really realized like that is so stressful to do. Like, why am I trying to torture myself to make sure I capture every moment of my life for other people, you know? Like I know that obviously you guys get something from it, whether it's like education, inspiration, whatever. But sometimes that comes at the expense of me overworking myself and pushing myself past my limits because I'm trying to like I said, capture everything about my life in real time and process it and live it. Like it just becomes a little too much. And if you've been, you know, keeping up with stuff that I'm doing, you know that I study human design. So that's another thing that has triggered a lot of major changes in my life is really like learning. Well, not even learning because I found human design in 2020, right? Or the 2020, was it last year? Oh my God, I think it was last year. Yeah, I only found human design like a year and a few months ago, but I would say like the first year was just me learning the material and like not even actually using it, but just like learning it. And this year I've been actually implementing the things that human design has taught me into my life. So if any of you guys have been like following my human design journey or whatever, um, and you feel like overwhelmed with the information, 
Trust me, like I get it. I know it's super overwhelming. I'm somebody that actually processes information pretty quickly, so I can understand for like other people, it may not be as easy to absorb the information. But just know like it takes time to not only understand it, but to also implement it into your life and like actually embody it. So this year was definitely like me actually playing around with the information that I got from it. And if you don't know, human design is basically a system. So it actually combines science and spirituality. Like if science and spirituality had a baby, it'd be human design. <laughs> um, I know some people aren't into the spiritual stuff, but it's something that has helped me. It's a cosmology, it's a system that, you know, does come off a little woo woo because of the whole spiritual side of it. But in my eyes, when we combine science, which would be like our physical bodies with spirituality, which would be like our inner bodies, our soul. I mean, that's like a perfect recipe for navigating this whole human shit. Because I think we can all say like living on earth is not easy. And I just feel like human design, because it's specific to you, it's based on your birth time, your birth location and your birthday, of course. Because it's so specific to you, it allows you to kind of learn how to navigate your own life and not focus so much on what other people are doing or like trying to copy other people's methods because you have not, I don't wanna say all the answers, but you have a blueprint of who you are and it gets so deep, it gets so detailed that like I said, when you actually apply the information to your life, you thrive, which is where I feel like I am now. But that took a lot of time. So like, that's why I was saying, if you are new to human design and you're trying to figure it out and you don't get it, one, I'm working on something to help y'all out with that. So excited about it, um, coming 2023. Um, but in the meantime, if you're you know, navigating the journey on your own, like don't put too much pressure on yourself to know everything quickly because it don't happen quickly. And for me, the, the major things that I needed to do didn't happen until now, which is like a year and a half after I first found out that I'm a projector. A mental projector at that. Yeah, I'm working on, I know I haven't really posted much on my human design page, um, but that's just cause life. But I am working on something to kind of help people who want to use human design to change their life the way that I have. I'm trying to create something where I can help people with that. And that takes me into the reason that I've moved to Atlanta. There's a lot of things that triggered the move to Atlanta. Like I said, I've been, been wanting to come here, but recently I've really been pushed by, I don't know if it's God, the universe, whatever, whoever. I've been literally pushed here and I do think that it has a lot to do with, or my ability to trust myself to like see the signs and to move here. That came from that effort that I put into learning and understanding my human design. Cause I don't think I would have trusted myself as strongly as I did had I not taken in the information that I know about myself through human design now. So like I mentioned, I'm a mental projector. I'm gonna try to explain some of the ter terminology to you guys. Um, even though I know it can be a little overwhelming, but I'm gonna try to like at least explain how it's helped me and how I've applied it to my life so that way you can see the benefits of it without me having to like explain what all the words that I'm saying mean. Um, but like I said, I'm a mental projector. In human design, there's five types. There's projectors, manifestors, manifesting generators, generators, and reflectors. So like I said, I'm a mental projector, so I am a subset of the projectors, right? Your roommate's resurfacing energy facial. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite exfoliators. It's like an exfoliating mask, but it doubles as a physical exfoliant and a chemical exfoliant, but it's not too harsh on the skin. Y'all, like I said, my lens is upside down, so I'm like, can't see how it really looks, that's so embarrassing. Okay, but yeah, you just apply it to damp skin. You do like a thin layer, let it sit, and then you massage the, oops, you massage the physical exfoliant part. So yeah, in human design, um, everyone has what they call an authority, and your authority is basically how you make decisions or how you can best make decisions. And so as a mental projector, I have mental projected or sometimes they call it environmental authority and so the way that i best make decisions is by being in the right environment and around people that i can talk to without getting advice back and being able to trust that no matter where i am that my environment the people around me are supportive of me and where i'm going and so i can process my decisions with the correct people because i know i'm in the right environment that's taking me where I'm supposed to go. 
That is like the best way that I can describe what environmental authority is. It's one of the most complicated authorities that there are in the human design realm, but I've really taken a lot of time to play around with it and like apply it to my life. And this year I really realized like I am not happy in my current environment. Like it's not fully supportive of who I am truly and where I'm going. And because human design does kind of help you confirm so much about yourself, I feel like I've discovered parts of myself or not even discovered, but like actually allowed myself to be certain parts of myself that I wasn't comfortable being before because I have never felt validated in that out in the real world. But with human design, because you're literally, you know, seeing yourself and most of the time when you look at the information about what it's saying about you, you feel that it's true, right? <laughs> so you kind of get the validation. I don't like to call it validation because human design is not supposed to validate you. You're just supposed to use it as a tool to help you feel better about yourself. But it feels like a sense of validation because it's like all this time I thought I couldn't be this um, because of what the world around me is saying. But when I look at my design and I see that I'm a mental projector and I'm only two to 3% of the population, it makes sense why there are certain things that are gonna be different from other people and how other people operate. And that sense of validation just, it helps me to trust that I can make my own decisions in the way that feels correct for me, even if it looks different from other people. And so, you know, I'm paying attention, because a, a big thing with environmental authority as well is that in the human design chart, there's all these different shapes. Um, I think I've showed my chart before, I put it on the screen. There's all these different shapes and um, they can either be colored in or not colored in. When they're not colored in, they're considered undefined, and when they're colored in, they're considered defined. So in my chart, you can see only the two triangles at the top are colored in, which means they're defined, and then everything else is white, which means it's undefined. Energetically, the places that are defined are places where you have consistent energy all the time. So with me having my the two triangles at the top, which are your head and your mind, with me having those colored in, they're defined, which means I'm constantly thinking basically. I have a, I have consistent access to thinking power and like brain power and like inspiration. It's like a constant stream of just thinking and like running things through and just, it gets really deep. But everything else, like I said, is white, which means that these places are undefined, which means the energy there is not consistent and it changes depending on who I'm around. And all these different shapes, they correlate to different parts of your body. So like there's, your heart, there's your solar plexus, which would be your emotions, there's your root, which is like pressure and stress, um, there's your spleen, which are your fears, there's your identity center, which is basically your identity and like your sense of love. And then there's your sacral, where there's your life force energy. And so with me having all of these centers undefined, I'm very sensitive to my environment, super sensitive to everything going on around me because those places are wide open basically. And so when I'm around other people and I interact with other people who have those placements, I am feeling into them. I am feeling into the energy that they're carrying because I <laughs> don't have it besides my brain. <laughs> and so just knowing that I can read situations and read environments and read people so clearly, it allows me again to trust myself and to trust when I'm not, when I'm in a situation or when I'm in an environment that doesn't feel right, I shouldn't be there. You guys know I was living with my boyfriend, who is now my ex. As you can see, he's not here with me in Atlanta, so we did break up. And I do wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about that, but I don't wanna come at it from an angle of me talking about the breakup itself. I kinda of just wanna share what I've learned and um, kinda of stay away from feeling like I'm sharing one side of the story because I don't think that that's fair to talk about a situation that involves two people and the other person is not here because I can share my perspective all I want but there's a whole other side that's not present and so just out of respect for him and our privacy I'm not going to really talk directly about events that occurred or anything but there are a lot of things that I've learned from it that I want to share. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water to this so I can massage in the exfoliating part. Um, but yeah, my ex and I were living together and so of course that's a huge part of my daily environmental take-in because I'm so sensitive to everything going on. Um, my home life is really important to me. I have to feel like a sense, like a, a sense of balance and calmness and peace 
literally in order to survive. Like physically, because my chart is so open, that also makes me very vulnerable to picking up on things that are not right. And like, not the kind of vulnerable that you can control. It's just like naturally I'm picking up on any and everything going on around me. So I can easily be affected by other people and their moods and whatever the case is. And don't get me wrong, I love South Florida. Um, that's why I chose to move there initially, I think, was because the first time I went, I was like, this feels so great to be here. But things have changed really since I first moved there. I think with me being in college, it was just a lot more carefree, a lot more fun, like no bills, like not worrying about adult stuff. Actually trying to live and survive in Miami is really hard because it's very expensive um, unless you're like already rich. And I mean, I'd make a pretty penny and I was still like <laughs> barely holding on. For the type of lifestyle that I wanna live, I mean, I know we all have our own standards of living. Um, I do have a pretty high expectation for like certain things that I like in my living space. So I don't know, I just started to feel like the apartment space that you get for the price, it's not worth it. I considered possibly buying a house down there, but I didn't really like any of the homes. Not to mention, I don't have a lot of friends down there. I do have friends, of course, that I've met through social media and influencing. And um, I had one college friend who actually moved to Houston last year. She knows who she is if she's watching this. <laughs> she was like one of my closest friends and she left me. Um, but overall, it just kind of started to feel like I was losing a sense of home. And I feel this might be like sharing too much of what influencers go through low key, but it's real. There's a lot of pressure for influencers or YouTubers or whatever to have the perfect relationship and to show up with the same person all the time. And you know, like, I don't wanna say put on a show, but like, I feel like there's this pressure once you post someone to like never post anybody again or to like make it work because you posted them. I feel like we don't really get as much slack as people who are just naturally dating out in the real world and not sharing, you know, the person that they're dating all the time or whatever the case is. Because there is an audience on us, there can be this pressure to set an example. And we are humans too. We're people who have to date around to see what we like and what we don't like. We have to experience things that you know, we thought would work out and didn't end up working out. We have to go through situations just like people that don't post all the time, but because that standard is there for us, and sometimes people just naturally are haters. <laughs> and so there's even more pressure there to like almost prove people wrong or to like show the trolls that what they're talking about is not true about what you're going through. When sometimes people are genuinely seeing what you're not seeing, like if you think about it, if you post someone, and like you guys do a video or like even a picture. Sometimes people can pick up on vibes that you're not necessarily seeing because you're like in it. <laughs> when you have eyes on you, people that don't know you or people that do know you, sometimes they can pick up on the fact that, hey, that might not be a right fit for you. But sometimes as an influencer, you wanna clap back or you wanna just like prove them wrong. And these are just general feelings. These are not, I'm not saying this is exactly how I was feeling in my situation, but I'm just saying in general, there is a lot of pressure to maintain a certain image in not only relationships, but like in all areas of life. And I really had to give myself some grace <laughs> this year specifically but just in general and like really be okay with the fact that there is a human a person that is off camera 90 percent of the time that needs to experience these things in life and i don't always have to look like i have it all together i don't have to always you know and i'm really also learning that the darker times are necessary for me to actually come on here and to tell you guys you know things that i've learned from my experiences or what have you and not feeling guilty for natural experiences that you have to have in order to grow. So I'm definitely, another thing human design has really been helping me with is like figuring out the flow of me experiencing life and sharing it in a way that feels organic, um, but that still feels fun and allows me the time to like process my life without feeling like I always need to be posting. All right, I'm gonna rinse off the marker that abrasion now. I love that Macadamia Raisin treatment, but them little particles, the little exfoliating particles that are in it, it's so hard to rinse off sometimes. Also, can we just get a round of applause for the lighting in here, y'all? Like, this lighting is even better than the lighting I had in my other bathroom. It's like a soft, soft LED light. I feel like the LED lights that I had in Florida, they were like so much. It was 
to blue. All right, we are going to go in with some retinol, I think. Yeah, I haven't used my retinol in a little while. I typically only use retinol one to two times a week. If you didn't know, retinol is like anti-aging powerhouse. My favorite one of all time is the Shine Dot and Retinol Reform. I swear by it, I've been talking about it for forever. So good for preventing the signs of aging, but it also has like lactic acid and some other exfoliants in it that are going to like help with current issues that you have, whether it be dark marks, um, uneven texture and tone. And retinol helps to encourage your cells regeneration. So you're basically promoting healthy skin cells. <laughs> well, the production of healthy skin cells, which keeps your skin healthy and glowing and happy. So I'm just going to, actually, before I do this, I gotta do a lip scrub. My lips are kind of dry. We're gonna use the Lush Mint Juleps Lip Scrub. This is one of my favorite lip scrubs. I like lip scrubs that have a little, like, roughness to them. <laughs> I hate when lip scrubs be soft. That's so annoying. I wanna really get my lips all oh. Smooth. And I love that this one tastes like mint. Some lip scrubs be nasty. Sometimes, if your lips are really dry, it's because you're not drinking enough water. So, make sure you do that. All right, now we're gonna apply Retinol Reform. Just take like two pumps. For reference, I am 25. So that's why I really only use this one to two times a week. It really is more of a preventative thing for me. Although, I do feel like it has helped with smoothing my texture. It's so good, guys. Like, it's... I know it's not a cheap product, but this is one of those products that I can say is 100% worth it. And I have a close relationship with like Shawnee Darden, the brand. So I do get sent this product a lot, I'll be honest with you guys. But even if they didn't send it to me, it's one of those things that I would definitely be purchasing and repurchasing all the time. Okay, so let's end this video, not end the video, but let's um, close out the video talking about the things that I've learned from my relationship and also from my experience living in South Florida because that is a chapter of my life that is closing, which is so crazy. I moved to South Florida in 2015, right after I graduated high school. It's now 2022, which means for seven years of my life. It's crazy. For serum, I'm going in with the Fresh Tea Elixir. This is a new serum by Fresh. I'm obsessed with it, y'all. Like, and I'm not, like I love serums, but I'm not like a serum freak because I feel like a lot of them do the same thing. But the texture of this is so milky. It absorbs into the skin so nicely. It's kind of like a hydrating serum. So it's really good to use in combination with um, active ingredients like retinol. So I'm just gonna layer this on top of the retinol reform to give me some hydration. It's also really good for anti-aging. And it smells, oh, smells so good. I'm actually gonna also use my jade roller to massage this into my skin. It smells divine. And typically I don't really like skincare that has like heavy fragrance. Not that the fragrance is super heavy, but it smells so good. I'm using my steel jade roller. I think it's from Satchu. Yeah, it's from Satchu. I'll link all these below, of course. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about these things that I learned. Number one, get clear on what you want out of a relationship. That is one of the biggest things that I have learned not only from this situation, but just from dating in general, like it is so important. And I, I think that when you're young, it can be kind of difficult to say exactly what you want because you kind of have to experience what you don't want in order to know what you want, right? That's another reason why I get myself some grace when it comes to this stuff. Cause like, you know, how, how would you know if you didn't know? <laughs> but yeah, getting clear on what you want out of a relationship. I feel like you don't have to police every little detail about it because sometimes people do show you things that you didn't know that you wanted. But it's important, I think, to at least have a certain set of standards and boundaries and to not fall short of that. I am going in with the Biosense Squalene and Marine Algae Eye Cream. This is also another favorite of mine recently. So creamy. I think that it's really helped like smooth my under eye area. I can't say how well it necessarily works for dark circles. I mean, I don't say that in like a negative way, but I'm saying I can't judge its power because I don't, I haven't experienced having dark circles under my eyes, but I just feel like this is so creamy and hydrating. It feels so good in my eye area. And I'm gonna also use my jade roller to roll that in. So yeah, um, getting to know what you do and don't want our relationship does require sometimes experiencing things that you don't want and that's okay. We all learn in different ways. That's another thing with me studying human design. 
knowing now that I am a third line, which I know you guys probably have no idea what that means, but it basically means that I'm here to learn and to gain my best wisdom through actually going through stuff and experiencing things. Like a lot of my life is trial and error. <laughs> And so, again, another sense of validation where I can trust that, hey, girl, you're a third line. You're supposed to learn your best lessons through going through it and like figuring it out the hard way. And so when you go through certain things that you did have to learn the hard way, like it's a part of your process. Like, it's okay. Y'all know I'm going in with the Lord Jones Acid Mantle Repair CBD Moisturizer. If you don't know, this changed the health of my skin. Like I started using this at a time where my skin was really not healthy at all. I had over exfoliated it, it was really bad. I feel like this is such a good product for like just maintaining, not only helping to repair, but also maintaining a healthy skin barrier so that your other products can absorb properly. Um, you don't have to be overly oily. Like it, it helps your skin to have that equal balance so that it can operate at its fullest potential and it's ugh, so good guys my skin feels so good right now <laughs> i have been so proud of how i've kept up with my skin recently and that was another thing i learned the hard way because y'all know i really messed up my skin like in 2020 because i was using products and not knowing what they were doing and like over exfoliating and so i kind of learned the hard way <laughs> and through trial and error how to repair my skin and now i feel like i'm just thriving out here with the skin because I learned the hard way what to do and what not to do. But yeah, allow yourself to mess up, like it's fine. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Superfusion Facial Oil. Another one of my favorite face oils, like. Ugh. The next thing I wrote says, don't absorb yourself into anyone else's problems. And I say that like as a very sensitive person, again, like super aware of other people and what they have going on and like even having the awareness to know how to fix their situations. Sometimes I put myself on the back burner and neglect a lot of the things that I want and I need to help other people with the things that they got going on. And I mean, we're human, so to a certain extent, yes, we should be compromising, we should be sacrificing and, you know, cultivating and investing in our relationships. But I think I got to a point where I lost where my problems ended and where his problems began and it just became our problems. <laughs> and like I said, to a certain extent, like that's okay, that I think all relationships are gonna require that merging, but you really can't allow yourself to get too absorbed in issues that aren't yours. And that's not only like in the material, but like also internal. I think females in general, sometimes we just tend to get a little caught up in seeing where there could be improvements and like knowing what improvements can be made and then feeling like we need to see the improvements through. That's a female thing and then also me being a projector. And sometimes you do have to step back and say, hey, like wh where are my problems ending and where is this person's problems beginning and where is their confusion? And how can I step back to lighten my load a little bit so that I'm not taking on something that isn't mine? And again, that goes for the outside world and your internal world because if someone has issues going on internally and you take that on, now that's more weight on you that wasn't yours before. And it can be easy to hold on to it and to feel like you have to hold on to it. But again, learn the hard way, third line, but you can't, you know, you can't hold on to stuff that's not yours if it's affecting you negatively. The next thing I wrote, number three, talk about how you feel. If you can't, then it ain't it. Something else that I've definitely realized is that I've been suppressing um, like, a lot of how I feel about certain things just to keep peace. I realized that I really struggle to talk about how I feel, which is not a healthy thing. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy because I'm somebody, I wouldn't consider myself emotional, although I am sensitive, but I'm someone who really processes, I really process my emotions as logically as I can for the most part. And so I usually am pretty clear and like, pretty sure in how I feel about things. And so for me to be in a position where I felt like I couldn't properly express myself or I felt like I had to not fully say something or like kind of walk on eggshells, I realized that by doing that, I'm invalidating my feelings, which, what? 
why would you do that? You should never feel that your feelings don't matter in a relationship. And so I'm definitely working on speaking up. <laughs> and that's not only in like romantic relationships, that's actually in general. My natural instinct sometimes is to keep peace. So I do have this like natural networking ability where I do know what to say and I know how to say the right things at the right times. But sometimes again, that's at the expense of me suppressing how I really feel about something because I'm so worried about how the other person is gonna take it or like creating conflict of some sort. I'm using the Fresh Sugar Advanced Therapy Smoothing Lip Primer. It's kind of like a serum for your lips. It literally, I sound like Kylie. Literally, <laughs> it literally makes my lips feel so good. And then I also top it off with a lip mask, where's my lip mask? Oh, I'm obsessing, 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 obsessing over this Laneige lip mask, but this is not the normal one. Oh wait, this isn't a mask. This is just a treatment balm, my bad. But you guys know how Laneige has that really popular lip mask well, this lip balm to me is better than the mask. I don't know why people are not talking about this. It has like a minty um, sensation, which I love. I love lip balms that make my lips single. <laughs> and it has like this, it's this iridescent, I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but it has this iridescent like glow to it. It literally, literally, <laughs> it's amazing. I can't even, I love it. Makes my lips look like a freaking glazed donut. I feel like I am someone that is pretty clear on what they want out of a relationship and like knows what feels right and what doesn't feel right. But that does no good if I'm not speaking on it or like talking about it. Like you could do all the work on yourself that you want and like feel like you're securing yourself and feel like you know what you want. But if you're not confident enough or if you don't feel safe enough to talk about how you feel and to be that full authentic version of yourself, it does no justice. I do still need to take some time to really get crystal clear on the things that I want because whoever I'm with next, I want to make sure that I am communicating the things that I want clearly. So I'm going to, of course, in this single season, spend some time with myself and really get crystal clear on that. But then the next step after that would be, you know, feeling or putting myself in situations where I feel safe to really talk about how I feel. And then the last thing I have is be yourself upfront. Period. Now this is a tricky one for me to talk about because when I first met my ex-boyfriend, I was only 21, which to me is young, especially now that I'm almost 26. Like now I look back, I'm like, I'm a totally different person. Not to say that when you're young, you don't know yourself, but I would say for the most part, you don't fully know yourself at 21. That whole time frame is so confusing as like a young adult because you're kind of stepping out of childhood and moving into a new phase of your life and trying to bring someone into that during that time frame can be really difficult. I'm not saying it's not possible because of course people get married young all the time and like, you know, they're fine or not even get married but just, you know, date young and it works out or whatever the case is. I don't think that you I don't think that you necessarily have to know yourself 100% to get into a relationship. I don't think that that's possible. I feel like even when you get in a relationship, there's still gonna be changes to who you are through the years, especially if it's a long-term thing. But for my specific situation at 21, I did not know myself nearly as much as I know myself now. Definitely, again, didn't take time to think about what I really wanted out of a relationship. Definitely, you know, had some insecurities. I was, I've always been pretty confident and like been around confident people. But of course I had certain insecurities and things that I didn't work through or hadn't worked through yet that kind of contributed to me getting into a situation that may not have been correct for me in the long run, you know? And again, I give myself grace. I do not beat myself up for anything that happened because without it, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys the way that I'm talking now. But I just say that to say, I know that I wasn't my full authentic self back then because it was I was still developing her but now I can approach dating from a different mindset and say okay now that I know all these things about myself and I know that it's safe to be myself I'm gonna make sure that I'm presenting that full self to whoever I'm dating so that there is you know no confusion about who I really am and that all of that takes work I'm not even gonna lie to y'all people be giving relationship advice and I'd be like there's so many other steps <laughs> before that like people come on and just give you like these 10 things to know, but like all of those things require other efforts and time and, you know, experiences to even have, like to hold that wisdom to be able to live by it. It's so complicated, it's so difficult and everyone experiences life so differently. 
which is actually why I really do love studying human design because it really does shed light on how all of our processes are supposed to be different. And it again, gives me permission to continue doing what I'm doing in my way because it's my way. And I'm living it in a way that feels correct for me and not what someone else tells me I should be doing for myself. So with all that being said, your girl is single. Your girl lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, a few other things about living in Atlanta. I have so many friends here. Like I already feel like I'm at home. You guys know I'm super close with Alyssa from Images Everything and she's here. You know, I have friends that I grew up with in Baltimore that have moved from Baltimore and live here. So it kind of feels like a sense of home. I have distant family and friends that live here. Like that was a huge thing in Florida I kind of felt like I didn't really have anybody there. So I'm super excited to continue investing into those relationships that I already have. And then I'm also excited to meet new people um, and to network with people that I've met like on social media but haven't met in person yet that live here. You guys know since I work for my computer, I could live anywhere. So trusting my environmental authority, going to where it feels right and just allowing things to continue aligning for me is where I'm at right now. Because I can honestly say since the decision to move, everything has been just lining up for me exactly how it should. And I can say it's exactly how it should because it's never felt so right before. And I can credit, again, a lot of this to the work that I've done on myself with human design. Oh, one more thing, I forgot to talk about the dogs. So you guys know me and my ex-boyfriend had two French Bulldogs. So the older one, Frenchie, um, he'll be coming here to Atlanta very soon. And my ex is going to keep Phoenix, the younger one, the girl. It's gonna be kind of an adjustment because, you know, they're used to being together. So being separate is gonna be a little weird. And then I'm also just now used to having two. So it's bittersweet, but it's for the best. I know that I can't take care of both of them here myself, but I'm super excited for Frenchie to be here. He's actually with my mom right now. She's like babysitting him for a little bit, but he'll be here very soon. So it'll just be me and Frenchie, my my boy. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. This is probably one of the longer updates that we've had, but it's been a little while. If you guys are not subscribed to my blog, how do you recommend that? I am gonna be posting more on there. Um, I do brain dumps where I basically just talk about things that I'm going through and I send them out via email to you guys. So you can subscribe using your email and also on my email list, I randomly pick people for giveaways all the time. So all you gotta do is have your email there and you can be selected at any point in life to get some products from me. So make sure you do that. Make sure you guys are following me on social media. Um, I don't really have a concrete plan to be honest with you guys when it comes to posting and sharing and things like that. I'm just kind of, again, allowing things to align the way that they align. But like I said, the major thing that I'm working on right now is this mentorship program where I'll be using human design to help you guys out, you guys or anyone who's interested, <laughs> and really create a space where we can use these tools to better our lives. So stay tuned for that. Um, that's a major shift, y'all. You know, I've been doing content creation for years. So for me to kind of switch into a mentorship role, um, it feels really good and exciting because it feels like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But trusting myself to make the switch is insane because I could definitely get comfortable with where I am with creating content. I make great money doing it, but I'm, I'm being pushed to mentor. I'm being pushed to use the things that I've learned to help other people achieve what I've achieved, but in their own way, which is why we use human design because we can curate your plan for you. You get where we're going with this yet? <laughs> I'm gonna link all the products that I used in this video down below. Make sure you are subscribed again, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!